Hi, my name is Basil Asaf and welcome to Pathology Dynamics. Today we will talk about the disease caused by bovine respiratory syncytial virus. In this video, however, I will not follow our regular format, but instead we will learn a new role for pathologists in discovering new diseases. But before I go into this disease, let's take a quick refresher on canine distemper pneumonia and cytosine distemper pneumonia we previously reviewed. And as always, I encourage you to go back and watch these videos for more details and I will put cards for them in the upper right corner of this screen. If you remember, canine distemper causes diffuse bronchointerstitial pneumonia affecting the majority of the tissue section. It is characterized by abundant hemorrhage, septal necrosis with alveolar architecture replaced by eosinophilic karyorectic and cellular debris that extends into the alveolar lumen and mixed with many neutrophils, alveolar macrophages along with necrotic debris, fibrin, hemorrhage and edema. Airway spaces as well contain hemorrhagic cellular exudate. If you remember, canine distemper causes diffuse bronchointerstitial pneumonia affecting the majority of the tissue examined. It is characterized by abundant hemorrhage, major areas of necrosis with alveolar architecture replaced by eosinophilic karyorectic and cellular debris that extends into the alveolar lumina and mixed with many neutrophils and alveolar macrophages along with necrotic debris, fibrin, hemorrhage, and edema. Alveolar spaces as well contain hemorrhagic cellular exudate, and we also saw the formation of multinucleated viral syncytia and the presence of eosinophilic intracytoplasmic and intranuclear inclusion bodies. And we saw the same lesion in the dolphin's lung here, with areas of inflammation, necrosis, and hemorrhage, and the formation of multinucleated viral syncytia and the presence of eosinophilic intracytoplasmic and intranuclear inclusion bodies. Now let's take a look at this cow's lung lung and describe what we see here. The entire lung section is diffusely affected, including both airways and lung parenchyma to a level that we can barely see normal alveolar spaces. The interlobular septa as well is prominent as we can see here. And as you can notice, cow's lung are lobulated with interlobular septa. And in this disease, you can see increased spacing between these lobules. Now let's take a closer look at the bronchus lumen here. As we can see, the bronchus lumen is expanded by dense cellular exudate composed of both degenerate and viable neutrophils, eosinophilic cellular and karyorectic debris, alveolar macrophages, sloughed epithelial cells, fibrin, hemorrhage, and edema. The bronchus epithelium, on the other hand, is hyperplastic and attenuated and necrotic in some other areas. And we'll frequently see that bronchus epithelium is forming multinucleated syncytial cells. Here's an example, and here's another example, and here's a third example. And also within these syncytia and other cells, you'll see intracytoplasmic eosinophilic inclusion, like in this example here, in this example here, and in this example here, and in this example here. Now, the alveolar architecture is similarly effective by similar inflammation and necrosis with hemorrhage, as we can see here, fibrin deposits, and edema, as well as the formation of multinucleated syncytial cells, as we can see in these three examples here. Some of which, as we mentioned, contain intracytoplasmic eosinophilic inclusion bodies, as in this example here and this example here. So in summary, we have a severe, diffuse bronchointerstitial pneumonia characterized by necrotizing bronchiolitis, formation of bronchiolar epithelial syncytia and viral inclusion bodies, and the formation of bronchiolar epithelial syncytia and viral inclusion bodies. As you can see now, the lesion seen here is closely similar to that we saw with canine distemper and cytosine distemper viruses, most particularly the formation of viral syncytia and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. And with that in mind, you won't be too surprised to know that bovine respiratory syncytial virus is a close relative to canine and cytosine distemper virus. Viruses. In fact, since the 70s, up until just two years ago, all of these three viruses belong to the same family. And you can imagine how the morphological changes of a tissue under the microscope can provide one end of a robe for the discovery of a virus or bacteria not previously reported. So going back again to 
this slide, this virus is called bovine respiratory syncytial virus. This is a viral disease that affects the lungs of cows and causes the formation of viral syncytia. It's a respiratory disease and cows usually present with dyspnea, as you can see in this cow, and the tongue is extended as well because the cow is trying very hard to breathe. And although these clinical signs are not specific for this disease, if you see a sudden outbreak, no history of shipping, and very sudden and high fevers in a group of cows, this disease should be on the top of your list. The lungs are usually consolidated with areas of emphysema and edema, as well as hemorrhage, as we can see in this example. One important thing to note here is that bovine respiratory syncytial virus, just like canine distemper virus, impair the host defense and predispose the host to secondary bacterial infection, which makes the disease more complicated. And consequently, fibrinous bacterial bronchopneumonia is a challenging differential, since many bovine respiratory syncytial viral infected animals will develop secondary bacterial infections. Another differential is parainfluenza type 3 virus, which belongs to the paramyxovirus family family and will appear very similar histologically with the formation of syncytial cells and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Cows can also get infected with infectious bovine rhinotracheitis virus, which is bovine herpes virus 1. However, this virus forms intranuclear inclusions and does not form intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. And as always, many thanks to the Joint Pathology Center for making these slide scans available. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure you view the previous videos. Also don't forget to spread the word and the knowledge by sharing this video with friends and colleagues who may find it useful as well. And please subscribe to the channel so you can receive all the new videos. Thank you.